Hey everyone, I'm Jen Garrett and welcome to the Move the Ball podcast. On this podcast, we are going to talk about how to succeed in business and in life by putting winning strategies into practice to help you advance faster. So if you're looking to move forward and reach that next level of greatness, then you are in the right place. Now get ready. Let's suit up, show up and move the ball. Hey everyone, Jen Garrett here. It's so great to be back with you on another episode of Move the Ball. Now, I'm really excited about this because this is the beginning of something special. This is the first interview of my Path to the Draft series, where I will be having conversations with NFL draft prospects on their path to the draft. So now, inside the huddle with us and ready to share his story and talk about his path to the draft and help us move the ball is Carlos Davis. Now, Carlos played defensive end at the University of Nebraska, finishing the season with 32 tackles and four sacks, second highest on the team. Carlos was also an eight-time letter winner at Nebraska, four each in football and track. And Carlos has a twin brother, Khalil, who also plays in Nebraska. And the two of them were the first Huskers in more than 50 years to be eight-time letter winners and are only two of 10 people in the entire history of Nebraska athletics to do so. Carlos, Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm, I'm really excited. As I was getting ready for our chat, I was thinking about all the different places that I could start our conversation. And where I want to kick this off is with you getting the invitation to the NFL Combine in Indy. What was that like for you? It was big. I remember it like it was yesterday. I uh, just finished. I was training down in Atlanta for the Combine. And I just got done with one of our workouts. We were just about to head to the field. And I just checked my phone really quick just my email because they sent it through email and I was scrolling through really fast and I saw NFL combine and I just, you know, I just got, I was excited because I really didn't think I would get one just based off the season we had. And uh, we were kind of off the radar a little bit, but I got it and I was excited. Well, it's great. I mean, it is an honor. 337 athletes get invited to the combine and uh, you are one of them. And so now let's fast forward. It's Saturday, February 29th day three of the combine where defensive linemen and linebackers are are up. So you wake up. What's going through your mind that morning and how are you able to stay mentally focused throughout the day? That week was just really tough. But um, everything before that was kind of like a stress test. They were putting us through all this stuff. So that morning I was really uh, able to recoup because they let us sleep in on the day of we had to perform. So I slept in. I had a good night's rest. I had a good breakfast. So I was able to um, gather myself together and and uh, get ready to perform. So I was feeling pretty good. Great. And tell us, what's your story? How did you get into football? What was your path? So I started playing football in second grade. I've been playing for a long time. I know the game and uh, I always played with people older than me. So me and Khalil were always the youngest people on the team. So that's how we were able to get better because we were playing with people that were older than us, a little bit stronger. And then we just, we've been playing ever since. That's great. And what excites you about the game of football? Um, I just love the team aspect of it, just being out there with 10 other people and you're all on one mission trying to accomplish your goal. And I really just love the people I play with and the relationships I get to have with those guys. That's great. And so your brother Khalil also plays for Nebraska. Now, how do you guys push each other to be better athletes on the field as well as better people off the field? Well, we're just really com- uh two competitive athletes and uh, even off the field we are as well. But uh, he, he doesn't hold back when I do something wrong or he does something wrong. We really are able to get on each other and kind of put our egos to the side. And that's how we really get better um, with each other. Just being able to push each other in the hardest times and just say what we really want to say and not holding back on feelings. Gotcha. And in life, as in football, there, there are obstacles that we have to overcome, things we have to tackle. Were there any challenges that you had to overcome to get to this point to play collegiately? Uh, yes. I mean, multiple injuries, not in college, but before I got to college. I think uh, a couple, three months before I went to college, I dislocated my ankle and uh, the bottom of my foot was pointing to the left. And I had to rehab before track season and then go straight to college. And I I wasn't fully healthy when I had my first track meet, but I just I was just throwing on it anyways. And then I just kind of rehabbed myself from there and then really didn't have any injuries in college. Now, when you have an injury that that's obviously a, an unpleasant, maybe devastating time, how do you rebound from that? How do you recover so that you can heal and then get back into the game? What did you do? 
um, you just got to take it step by step because you're not the recovery process. You're not even, you know, around the sport. When I broke my ankle in eighth grade, I had to relearn how to walk. And I, I had forgot how to walk when I got out of surgery. So I had to relearn how to walk again, um, just how to take steps, how to squat and do all those normal things. So I was taking care of the little things first because the sport was always going to be the same. So I just had to take care of those little things and then get back into the sport. But really just taking the recovery process serious. Sure. And you've got great athletic talent, but what separates you from other football players out there? How are you different? And what do you think you have that really positions you to play at the highest level? For for me, I'm 310 pounds. I learned how to run at an early age. So I, when I was, I was not always as big and I used to run track. I learned how to run. I had a great track coach in, uh, in middle school who taught me how to run. I used to run 400s, the four by one, four by four. Um, the open 100. And that really stuck with me. Even now when I'm 300 pounds, I still know how to run. And it's really not about how big you are. It's about how how well you can move at your size. And that's what I learned. And I take that to football. And it was also good in track because I was good on my feet. Track taught me how to be good on my feet. I really just use that in the sports I do now. Sure. And tell us, what was your most memorable game playing at Nebraska and why? I would say in 2016, when I got my first sack, I was just out there playing. And um, I was a younger dude playing with older guys, and I was just out there trying to be that fifth man and help the team. And that game when we played Wisconsin, we took them to overtime, and we lost. But just being a, a factor in the game was big to me, being a freshman. So that, that really stuck with me the most. Sure. And how do you bounce back after a game where, where you guys lose? Uh, that's tough. Really, you just got to go back, watch the film, and see – you know, what you could have did better, what what lost us the game and fix that the next week and just really be critical on yourself and, and how to get better when you're losing. Sure. I, I like that. I talk with a lot of different professional athletes and a lot of them talk about reviewing that game film. It's re, it's reflection. It's assessing. And this is important off the field, too, in our own lives when we have an outcome that we don't want or that we don't like or it wasn't intended what we what we were hoping for. It's going back and reviewing the situation and figuring out how you can be better so that way you can take that more improved version of yourself forward to move the ball and be successful. So was there a coach in your life that really helped you and guided you to be a better person? Yes. One coach that just sticks out is uh, John Perella. He was there through my critical years of coming out of being a freshman and trying to be a full-time player for four years. But it was really stuff he did off the field that he taught me how to be a man, how to grow up off the field, and then as well as on the field. And outside of football, what hobbies do you have? I'm a big fisherman. I'm an outdoors guy. Uh, Not a big hunter, but I'm willing to do it. But my thing is fishing. Okay. Great. And then I, I have a, a couple of fun other questions that I would like to ask you. What's your favorite food? My favorite food? I would have to say oxtails. Okay. How about favorite football movie? So normally on the podcast, I do this two minute drill where I ask just what's their favorite movie. But here I'm going to ask you, what's your favorite football specific movie? My favorite football specific movie. I'm a big fan of, uh, I guess, Remember the Titans. That's and, my and favorite. I, I just like that old school feel of seeing what it was like back in that day. And uh, remember the Titans gave me that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great movie. I have actually have goosebumps. Uh, I love that movie. What about favorite professional sports team? It doesn't have to be football. I really, uh, I'm a Chiefs fan, a big Chiefs fan. That's where I'm from. And so I really like them, but I'm, a, I'm big into MMA as well. I really like watching MMA. Okay. Any particular fighter that you, uh, that you like? Israel Adesanya. Okay, good. And the last question would be, if you could be any superhero, who would you be and why? That's a good question. Uh, I like villains. So I kind of like, I'm a big fan of like this uh, Chucky and and all them and all those guys. But that's just, that's just what I like. Okay, great. Thanks for sharing. So now as we wrap up the show, tell people, how can they follow you on your journey? What's the best way to, to connect and see what you're up to? I'm on all the socials, but uh, Instagram is really what I post a lot on. And uh, it's connected with Facebook. So anything I post will be on Facebook as well. Okay, great. And we will be sure to put your your Instagram and all of your social links in the show notes so people can connect and follow you on your journey on the path to the draft. So thank you so much, Carlos, for being on the show today. You're welcome.
And I, I wish you much success in the draft and in this next chapter. And thanks to everyone for listening to today's episode. And we will catch you next time. Until then, make sure that you suit up, you show up, and that you move the ball. Thank you for listening to Move the Ball. To see more about what I'm up to and how I can help you to move the ball, check out my website at www.jenniferagarrett.com. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode. And also join the Move the Ball Facebook group for even more content and to be a part of the Move the Ball movement.